Hey guys, in this session we're going to be looking at uh, factorizing quadratics where the coefficient of x squared is not 1, but there is a common factor. So when you see that coefficient of x squared is not 1, you mean you can actually automatically start using uh, the quadratic formula or use your graphics calculator to try and figure out a way to factorize it. But sometimes you can actually have a look at the questions um, given to see if there is a common factor in the equation. So take for example question A here you can kind of see straight away that 3 is a common factor. So what you could do is you can take 3 out as a common factor. And when you do that, you're going to get 3 bracket x squared minus x minus 12. And now inside the bracket is what you have is a straightforward quadratic, which you can actually factorize. Because we know that two numbers that multiply to negative 12 and add to negative 1 is going to be negative 4 and positive 3. All right, so just to kind of recap what we did in the previous kind of um, session, we were looking at uh, two numbers that multiply to negative 12 and add up to negative 1. Just to kind of recap, the negative 12 is from there and the negative 1 is the coefficient of x here. So the two numbers are going to be negative 4 and positive 3 and negative 4 plus 3 equals to negative 1. So our fully factorized um, equation for the first question would be 3 multiplied by x minus 4 multiplied by x plus 3. Okay, so that's question A done. And now we're going to question B. What we have is we've actually got negative 4 in front of the x squared. And if you'd watched the last episode in this particular series, you would know that when you have a negative x squared, you want to get rid of the negative before you start factorizing. And so in this case, we're going to take out negative 4 as a common factor. And when we take out negative 4 as a common factor, what we're going to end up with is multiplied by x squared minus 9. Now, looking at x squared minus 9, we know it's a difference of two squares. That means one of the brackets will be minus 3 and the other one will be positive 3. So we can factorize this as negative 4 multiplied by x minus 3 and x plus 3. Hopefully you're with me so far. And now moving on to question C. So with question C, what we have is We've got two variables, which is the p and the q. They're both perfect squares. Uh, we also have the 2 and 8 that we need to kind of consider. Now, looking at the 2 and 8, we know the common factor is 2, so we can get bring 2 out of, out of this equation. And what we left over with is p squared minus 4q squared. And if you remember from yesterday's uh, little, sorry, yesterday's, the previous uh, video in this series, you will know how to actually factorize this, because what you have is you've got p squared which is a, squ uh, a square number and you also have 4q squared which is also a square number so then what we're going to do is we're going to leave that 2 outside we're going to put up two brackets and our first term is going to be p and p and we're going to have one of them as minus and the other one is going to be plus and of course square root of 4 is going to be 2 square root of q squared is q so this is going to be ending up looking like 2q so yeah, so that's pretty much how uh, we look um, at we're looking at factorizing quadratics. When your a value of x squared is uh, or a value or the x squared coefficient is not one, but also there are some common factors to make things a little bit easy. Now in the next video in this series, we'll be looking at when there is no common factor and when the coefficient of x squared is actually bigger than one. All right, guys, that's basically it for this video. As always, don't forget to like this video and share this video and also subscribe to keep up with the latest content and when the next tutorials are on. There should be some playlists popping up around the screen somewhere. Check them out. Uh, and as always, thank you for watching.